Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Mariah and on this channel, I talk about all things real estate related and organ related. So if you are interested in either of those things, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Today's video was requested on Instagram from a past client of mine. And I thought it was such a great idea because I know personally as a real estate agent, I'm guilty of just talking to my clients and just assuming that they know what I'm talking about when I say these real estate terms, but oftentimes they really might not understand what you're talking about because in real estate, it kind of does feel like we have our own little language. So whether you are a new real estate agent, someone getting into real estate investing, or if you're a home buyer or you want to be a home buyer, these are all terms that you're going to want to know. So I just wrote out a list and I'm going to just speed through this list. My camera's on one bar, so if I talk fast, I apologize. I'm gonna talk about active. Active means when you see a home and it says it's active, that just means that the home's still available, they haven't accepted an offer yet. And then we have under contract. When you see a home and it says that it's under contract, what that means is that they have accepted an offer, but they haven't done their inspections yet, they're, or they're still in their inspection period. So there is always still a chance things could fall through if something goes wrong with the inspection. And then we have the term pending, which pending just means that we, they have accepted an offer and they've already done their inspections. So basically the chances of things falling through, it could happen, but they're pretty thin. So next thing I wanted to talk about is the statute of frauds, which says that everything must be in writing regarding a real estate transaction. I always laugh when I see these real estate TV shows that have um, the agents explaining their offer or they call up their other agent and explain the offer over the phone and get an accepted offer over the phone or they're sitting at dinner with the other agent and that's how they ex accept their offer because it really doesn't work that way. If it's not in writing, it doesn't matter. It doesn't count. You can't just verbally call another agent um, or sit down with them at dinner and tell them your offer. It must be in writing or it doesn't matter. So all offers have to be in writing. We can't just, um, I know before I've, in the past, I've had buyers ask me if I could just verbally present an offer to a seller, but it doesn't work that way. Everything must be in writing. Next vocab word that we're gonna look at for real estate is contingency. Basically, this means only if. There's different contingencies, but it could mean, um, just one of the examples is that um, a common contingency right now is it is uh, contingent upon the buyer's current home selling. There's an offer on the home, but they can only buy the home if, only if their current home sells. So that's kind of just to explain a little bit what a contingency is. And then we have earnest money. Basically, the way I like to describe this is it's like a engagement ring. Um, basically, it's just something that the buyers put down to show they're serious. It's not the down payment. I see a lot of people get it confused with the down payment, but that's not what it is. They're two separate things. Basically, your earnest money is say, um, you know, $2,000 and that's your earnest money. Once you have an accepted offer, you have three business days generally to get your earnest money in to the title company and that earnest money is gonna sit in escrow until closing and when we do close, it goes towards the cost of the home. This is just to show you're serious because say you back out as the buyer the day before closing for no reason, then that puts the seller in a really crappy situation. They're gonna to get to keep your earnest money in that case. However, the organ sale agreement is written in favor of the buyers. So the buyers do have a lot of outs where they get to keep their earnest money. So say you as the buyer, um, you know, you back out because of the inspections or during the inspection period, you still get to keep that earnest money. So that's just what earnest money is. Next uh, vocab word is escrow. Basically, escrow is the, you know, 40, 60 day process where we are changing the title and getting everything ready to go for you to become the new owner of the home. During the escrow process, you will get your inspections done and it is the buyer's responsibility to pay for the inspections and you will have the appraisal done. Um, besides those two things, on your end as the buyer, there's really just a lot of waiting for you. It's not a lot that you have to do during this time. Next vocation have we're going to talk about is buyer's agent versus listing agent. These are kind of obvious, but surprisingly, a lot of people don't know the difference or that there is a difference or 
anything what they mean. So basically, buyer's agent, that is who is representing you as the buyer. It does not cost you anything as a buyer to have a buyer's agent represent you. And listing agent is the agent who signs the listing agreement with the seller. They're representing the seller. They put the home on the MLS. And a big confusion I see is a lot of times sellers will wonder, why hasn't my listing agent been showing my home? Generally, that's not what you want. You generally want your um, listing agent to represent you and you want the buyer, someone else to bring the buyer. That's generally how things work. Um, as having a team with my husband, um, a lot of times Spencer and I will, um, if we have a situation where we have a home listed and then we get the buyer as well or one of our buyers wants to make an offer on it, one of us will take the buyer and one of us will take the seller and we keep it completely separated. Next vocab word is the inspection period. Basically, this is negotiable. It's something you write up in the contract. Usually it's a 10 business day period where you as the buyer have the opportunity to get inspections done if you choose to. And then you have the chance to back out and keep your earnest money. Honestly, you don't have to back out because of the inspection. You can back out for literally any reason or no reason as long as it's within that 10 business days and you still keep your earnest money. That's what the inspection period is. And then lastly, that leads me to the repair addendum. What the repair addendum is, is once you have your inspections, you have the opportunity to ask the seller to do repairs for you. And they can say no, or they can counter, or they can say yes. Um, and that is what you're going to write in the, that is what the repair addendum is for. That's what you're going to be writing in the repair addendum is what you're asking in the repair addendum you're going to be asking the seller for the repairs that you want them to do for you all right you guys that is it for today's video thank you for taking the time to watch if you or someone you know is thinking about buying or selling real estate in the state of oregon here's my email address i would love to help give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and i'll see you next time